Pedos Eat the Better today on Do By the River. We're going to talk about Lionel Messi. Yes, we are. We're going to talk about what went down last night in Subaru Park as the Philadelphia Union took it to Toronto FC. We're also going to preview this upcoming Sunday's matchup against those stinking pesky New England Revolution. And don't you dare go anywhere, guys, because you do not want to miss this episode of Do By the River. And let's get this started, guys. Eh, got it. And that is right. Welcome, everyone, to Duke by the River, the show where we follow everything Philadelphia Union, brought to you by Philly Sports Network. What is going on, everyone? Of course, let me introduce to you guys my panel of expert dupers. Let's start off with my man, Justin Bald, against Michael Bradley Freiburg. And you gave it to him last night, my man. What's going on, Justin? I'm doing pretty well. Uh, my voice definitely <laughs> has come back a little bit this it's morning. Better. It was uh, gone, and that's always fun trying to talk to your boss on the phone when you have no voice. Uh, but yeah, no, so what's I'm wrong uh, with you? I'm ex- I'm excited to uh, to talk about that uh, that that whooping uh, that we laid on uh, on TFC. Yeah, man. I mean, you know me. Anytime we beat up on a on a Toronto sports team, I'm always down for that. Of course, let's also introduce, ladies and gentlemen, the prince himself, the prince of Negadelphia, I guess, or, or the, the the pessimist on our, on our podcast. Well, it, it, it doesn't matter because he gives us some great insight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Zach Lobasso. What's up, buddy? Nothing much. I'm actually OK. So real. So if if I was on the pod to preview the game uh, yesterday, I was going to predict two zero. For the union, so I, I was I, I was confident going into that game. Um, so I'm not always pessimistic. <laughs> I, I'm 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 more realistic, I think. But you know what? We we'll can call because because Tim is so. I love the union no matter what. They're my <laughs> best friends. I, I'll take that pessimistic uh, pessimistic title, I suppose. <laughs> it's all good, man. We we still we you know what it, it, we do need that here. We it gives us we can't just have smooth sailing podcast episodes. No one would act, will care about it. So it's it definitely is a you're in a very important piece to this to this diamond, as we we should say. No, so, you're on the diamond, man. It's crazy. That's how, you're a brujo, though. Uh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Gazdag. I'm I'm Gazdag right now. I'm the top. I'm the top of the diamond. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, before we move forward, guys, if you are watching this on PSN or on El Parcero Philly's YouTube channel, don't forget to like the live and subscribe to both of those channels. Of course, PSN is your home for all of our Philly sports here. Great people who cover the the teams here in Philadelphia. And of course, uh, you, you know my craziness that goes on on my YouTube channel. So definitely check that one on out. And of course, do by the river you got. You can find us wherever you stream podcasts from Apple, Google, Spotify, you name it. We're on there. And of course, we're also part of PSN Radio. You can find the other great Philly Sports Network podcasts on there as well. Well, guys, to start off today's podcast, why not get this shit house restarted bright and early? Lionel Messi to the Philadelphia Union. Come on, Ernst. Make it happen. Now, I mean, guys, listen, as much as we want Lionel Messi here in Philadelphia, we got to still be realistic, and we know how the Philadelphia Union run, and Messi is uh, – he might be a little way over the DP slot. You, you know, uh, Ernst likes to spend $5 million, not $500 million. <laughs> Well, Well, Johnny. He's a free agent. He's a yeah, free agent. Ah, this is correct. Transfer. So, I mean, <laughs> listen, pay, it's, that salary might be a little high, but uh, there's dude, no transfer fee to pay. So, hey, listen, listen, listen. If Sugarman, if Sugarman wants it, he can make it happen. I tweeted at KD today. You know, he's got the funds. He could make it happen. Yeah, he probably can afford that. Sugarman, Sugarman might just have to maybe not dude. have have a have chopper fuel for one month. Hey, it's totally fine, man. Like, Messi to the Union makes so much sense, right? Why don't we start a GoFundMe account for all this? We – because oh, – A penny a day brings Messi here. I mean, we could also, we could also you know, Ernst probably is like, hey, uh, Leo, you, uh, you you get to play here. You, uh, you can get this really nice house in Fishtown. <laughs> and there's all these and there's all these really cool breweries and hipster coffee shops. No, no, no. I mean, Messi needs to be want to come here. 
Messi needs to be in a penthouse in Rittenhouse Square. That's where Messi. Wait, wait, yeah. no, no, maybe no, like a big be... house in Wayne. Big house in Wayne, maybe. Uh, Put him on the okay. main line next okay, to Adam, Adam Booth. Booth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere, somewhere in the, the in the United States, Adam Booth's ears just perked up. Yeah. Although, although if he does join, my my wallet will be hurting because I owe you guys and now Amanda a jersey. If Messi, <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> if Messi signs for the union, I, I'm actually glad that MLS Soccer or MLS the MLS store actually gives you that feature because I've only done that with uh, the NFL shop. I didn't know the MLS shop did that, so that was very clutch. I I all I had the, every intention just putting up the picture of the custom jersey with the name on the bottom there, but that, that was definitely close. But yeah. guys, in all seriousness here, like this is going to be the craziest sweepstakes for a player we've ever seen because of the fact that you guys just said it. Oh well, man, it's for free. There's no transfer fee. You got to pay on this. Yeah, but, but it, it's, it's who can afford his salary. There's two teams. It's mess. It's a uh, PSG or it's man city. Like that's it. They can't wait. They just, they just spent 140. Yeah, on they Grealish. just spent 100 million on Jack Grealish. Like, I, I, yeah, but that, salary's different. Like, salary. Yeah, but you still got to pay most of that that transfer fee up front. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, I know, but I, I think that if 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 any team's gonna do it, it's gonna be one of those two teams. And literally, you just got out of well, you got out of it on a technicality, but you just got out of a financial fair play. Suspension that was overturned because UEFA is is you know beyond inept and they they screwed yeah. themselves over. But uh, yeah, I, it wouldn't exactly. Well, I would say financial fair play is a joke, but it wouldn't yeah. exactly look great if you're you know you just got out of that and oh we spent hundred million dollars on one player and we're signing this player who's making a hundred million dollars as well. Yeah, I, I think that the I think he's gonna go to PSG because I he wants to play with Neymar again. Like I think that makes the <laughs> they like, really were that much of buddies in PSG. Well, they just posted a picture like the other day that he was hanging out with Paredes um, and Neymar and uh, Verratti was there, and there was one other guy I'm pretty sure, and they were all just hanging out. So I uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he went to PSG. <laughs> must uh, must suck to be uh, Aguero. Then you signed. Dude, him. I was just gonna you say, signed you but... signed Barcelona to be with your national teammate, and they're he's like gone. best friends. They're like best. Like his son is Aguero's son. Messi's his godfather. Like they're like best friends. And, and, I and that's the funny so thing is like the only reason that they couldn't sign Maria, yes, AK gave Messi yes, is <laughs> because. Is because of the way that the of La Liga changed the, uh, the rules. it was like the the salary rules and that you, you can spend on the first team or whatever it was. Yeah, which is so funny because he did take a massive pay cut once he won Copa America. He like restructured <laughs> his whole contract. yeah, but he's still he's even a pay cut from his exorbitant salary is still yeah. I think he was making like five hundred or six hundred a week, and he went down to like four hundred. But, I mean, don't get me wrong. His, most of his money comes from endorsements. Yeah, but still, he yeah. was still making a pretty penny Tons. on his actual contract. Yeah. So we still think it's City. And uh, I mean, PSG doesn't surprise me because they, I know those guys have money out the, Oil out money. the A-hole. But, I don't but, think anyone else is, is going to be able wow. to. Wow. Listen. So not a United. It, not a. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think. Go to the Canadian United. Premier League. That's how it works, guys. So I, I don't think. For soccer or football, whatever you want to call it. For for that purpose, I would I think just seeing him Serie A be be crazy. Like imagine uh, him on like an Inter or Milan, obviously money wise. You they? Oh my well, god! You well no. no. So so what my uh-huh. dream is my dream is he goes to City and then Ronaldo goes to Man U and they just one last year they just do get no, out in the press. No 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 Ronaldo to Man U. I Why not? Him when he, I love because he, he doesn't want him there. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want him there. I liked him when we first had him, and that was younger. You don't need. You don't need a ball hog like that who takes away the offense. We already have a great front four right now. Oh, uh, I don't know, man. He's ready for Sancho season. That's what he's ready for. Yeah, come on, come on, Sancho. Yeah, just play Ronaldo up top, number nine. Like he's. I still like him he's and Cavani. Cavani. Yeah. All right. I still take Ronaldo over Cavani any day. Any day you ask me who I want at number nine, and you give me Ronaldo or Cavani, I'm taking Ronaldo. Like that's, easy. A, that's a mad, some mad Cavani disrespect, easy. my man. Oh, I love Cavani. No no, disrespect. Cavani's probably like the third best striker of his generation, maybe fourth. Oh, I remember I, his Napoli days. That was magic. But it's Ronaldo, man. Like he, he, the second best footballer of all time, in my estimation. 
Yeah, but we crazy. had him at one point. We don't need we don't need him again. Uh, it's, it's just it, nostalgia. It would just make me happy. It's it's just crazy. Like today, you get these news, and how many different fan bases are like Messi to uh, oh, well, to Barcelona, see, Ecuador. <laughs> did, you, did you see what um San Jose Earthquakes tweeted out? They're oh like, Rip God. every MLS club team's mentions. Oh, <laughs> that is, that's true. Like, well, the, even the <laughs> Union social media person was like. Uh, open Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. 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 Like, 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 Even the like, Atlanta people like that one. I saw that. Well, <laughs> Atlanta is what well, they're spending like twelve million on a guy, and then there's another rumor that they're spending fifteen million. It's like, where the hell are they getting all this money? I get Arthur. They're Mike getting Tata with, back, so it's all gonna be dandy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tata. No, Jason Christ to Atlanta. Call oh it now. Oh Atlanta would God. burn, and all of us, especially. It, uh, Orlando fans would all laugh because it'd be really funny. <laughs> yeah, it, it would be hilarious. Uh, listen, guys, we had to start off with this. Obviously, listen, we are an uh, MLS podcast, but you know the S stands for soccer, and obviously, Messi is one of the biggest figures in soccer worldwide. So, why not start with a little fun and, and talk about Lionel Messi? It is going to be intriguing. I think uh, it's sports fan in general. It's not just be soccer fans, but sports fans in general are going to be keeping an eye on on this because it's one of the most you know. Zach kind of said it, one of the most polarizing players um, of our generation, and now he's looking for a new team to play for. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Um, but speaking of bombs, uh, we got a Bogue bomb. And, I, and of course, uh, you guys, I tweeted it today. Bogue bombs are way better than Woj bombs. I, I, I hey, stay the, clear. The, that. The, the mustachioed Schefter, the mustache, yes. whatever you want to, what do you want to, whatever you want to call him, Tommy Bogues, the, the mustached hero that we all need comes up with, whenever he tweets something, you know it's. What do you it's think? Is that like two or play. three iPhones? Is he that serious about it? Is he that crazy about it? Oh, I'm, I'm talking sure, like Schefter I'm, here. I'm sure he's he's pretty probably give uh, uh, Fabrizio Romano a, a run for his money. I would love to meet him. We uh, let's make this out. Well, I want to meet Tom. That's a bold statement, there, Justin. Hey, that's hey, a yeah. bold statement. I'm hey, also yeah, a pretty I'd, complex league here. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to have Tommy Bogues on the uh, on on the pod. That'd oh, we'll a, have to make that happen. That's that'd be bold, that'd right. be legendary. But is po- a different animal, man. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's a crazy. different animal. So according to this Bogue Bomb today, the so we've all been kind of waiting for this Matthias Dav- Davo um a, official signing to, to literally I said it to you yesterday. <laughs> yeah, we were in a stand together. It was like, when is this gonna happen? Because obviously deadline is tomorrow, correct? Or t- yep. yeah, it's tomorrow, yep. and we still haven't heard it. We had the Bueno, we Bueno's here, he or he's not here, but he's signed. Um, we still dealing with visa issues, and but Dava, we haven't heard the official sign- naming of it. We haven't, we don't even know if he's going. He's, I'm sure he has to go through his own visa issues, but for right now, you know, we're still in limbo. Um, so we'll, we'll wait and see uh, what's what's going to happen with that. But you know, Bogues was kind of saying that it'll probably then they'll be making official, um, probably tomorrow. What do you guys think the holdup is here? Is it the yeah. visa? I mean, I I can't imagine what it. Maybe it's like. Who's paying like what portion of the salary? Because mm. I know they the loan fee loan was deal. agreed upon. The loans through the end of the year. I'm sure it's probably just okay. Who's covering his salary? Because then they got you got to talk with uh, Corinthians, obviously who is his you know his parent club. Um, so that's I I think that has to be it. Like I can't f- imagine anything else because you know any kind of visas. Like, 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 bueno, like the visas are just that's not contingent on the um, the the signing going through. I think it what is it? The ITC is basically once that's official, that's when the deal is actually official. So I'm sure it's probably just some some lingering paperwork that's probably has to be pushed through. But at, at least like I said Tommy Bogues tweet, tweeting that like definitely. <laughs> alleviated some of the anxiety that i i definitely broadcasted to to, to you johnny and tim it was just like it, like we heard this rumor and bueno was made official like what's taking so long and that was that was a, that was a big concern but it, hey at least we know like because tomorrow is the deadline so that was like yeah, well is it official like we do only have one more day at the time we were saying it Exactly. Exactly. So we'll we'll wait and see. We'll see what happens with with all that. But it should definitely be interesting. But uh, um, so last night we had a match, ladies and gentlemen. We your Philadelphia were in action facing off against Toronto FC in a match. Now I don't want to say it was must win because it's obviously a little too early for all that. But 
kind of a match kind of you just needed to just feel good about yourself right like we've been in bad form over the last seven matches we've kind of talked about it before in the previous podcast um and we just we just needed to see a match that the union just looked like the philadelphia union because of course we have um uh club america next week and that's the match of all matches um so last night uh the union it, it, right off the bat i'll tell you guys it just felt like the philadelphia they were tenacious they were after the energy was clearly there to start off the match they had a couple of good opportunities um it started early in the 12th minute off a corner kick Jakob klesn is using the his at the back of his head looking like casper shabilko using any part of his body <laughs> to get the goal in and that hey, put the union up one and nothing. Doesn't matter how, just matters how it goes in. Exactly, exactly. And then the union went on a tear that would last for 24 minutes, where they scored three goals in this period. Um, about uh, I want to say 21 minutes after that goal, uh, we had ourselves a penalty in the uh, down in our our. Well, we had a penalty cut kick opportunity there, and um, Daniel Gazdak, much a guy that we've criticized very much so. Got his first goal. It was a penalty kick goal, and the goalie picked the right side, but he still buried that bad boy. And Daniel Gazdak is on the books. He's got his first goal in MLS history. <laughs> and we learned our lesson here on this podcast that we will never talk about a Gazdak goal prediction ever again because we need that to happen every single time. <laughs> and then three minutes later to ice the, the to put the icing on the cake there, a beautiful pass. I believe it was from El Brujo um, mm-hmm. to Sergio Santos, a nice long ball. And Sergio used that that speed, man. He is freaking fast as lightning. My, I'll tell you guys, he beat out beat everyone on, on Toronto FC, and he just slid that right past Bono of, of TFC, and that would kind of be the ice in the cake. Second half, you know, it was, you know, it was kind of a lot. I mean, it, it was a lot of uh, I want to say wasting time, but you know, they weren't as you know they they were at more of like a 60, 70, not not like a 90, 100 percent right there as far as energy goes. And we saw the homegrowns. We saw some homegrowns, which we'll, we'll, we'll get to in a second. I want to ask you guys about that. But the Union get a big 3 nothing win there. Um, real quick, guys, I just want to – we have uh, a clip from Ryan Anderson. If you guys don't know Ryan Anderson, he is a, a, a T – he's a Toronto sports YouTuber, but he dabbles into some – SEC football, he dabbles in the CONCACAF League, so um, he's a big TFC guy, and uh, he was kind enough to kind of give us a clip, uh, giving giving us his thoughts about last night, so without further ado, we're going to show you that. So, ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Anderson. Ryan Anderson, Parcero asked me to be on the podcast to do a short review of Toronto FC versus Philadelphia Union from my perspective. Toronto didn't play well when they played in the 3-5-2, didn't really set them up for success. The union were all over them, strong in the first half. The second half was a little bit better for TFC, but that first half was a stuff of nightmares. Good players for TFC for me, Achara, Soteldo, Peruzza, they looked great. The defense did not care. They went through the motions. Josie didn't play well. He went through the motions. For me, tactically, Toronto was outclassed by Philadelphia. Sergio Santos was buzzing around like a fly. He deserved to score the goal that he scored. The team didn't play well in the first half, and that's what lost us the game. So congratulations to Philly. They're a lot stronger of a team than I've been thinking and a lot stronger of a team than I've been saying. They are not a one-year wonder. They're still a dominant team. So they showed that last night, and I think they'll be going on to a great run of form as the season continues. I'm not saying they win against Club America in the Champions League, but they'll go on a good run of form. So thank Toronto for that one. So talk to you all later. Hopefully next time I'll actually be on the podcast when we play y'all for preview and review. But I was busy this week, so CONCACAF League and all that. So that's life. See you all soon. Thanks for having me on. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Anderson. Good good speaking to him, guys. Um, I'll put the... Put his uh, the link to his YouTube channel in my in um descriptions there, but definitely check him out. Great TFC guy, um, but well put, well put. Uh, we uh, we definitely just showed up, and I I definitely do believe that. Um, I, I want to start off with uh Zach here, Zach. Now we didn't get you in the preview. You were uh you weren't there last night. I'm assuming you did watch it though, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What did let's let's hear the 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 realist as we 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 determined today the realist perspective of last night. I'm curious what you have to say. Um, so they, they, they did look good. Um, but it doesn't like this against a team like Toronto, this performance should be expected. 
Like it doesn't it doesn't make me any more excited for the rest of the season because this is what it should be looking like every time they play a team that's in the bottom half like Toronto is or like Miami or like Chicago is. Like they shouldn't be struggling. Now they didn't struggle last night. Obviously, they they looked fantastic. It looked like the press was back to its full force. Um, the offense was more free flowing, uh, and I don't know. But Doyle looked like he got a new pair of legs on him. I I don't, I don't know what was going on, but um, like that fountain of youth. Yeah, I, I don't know, but it's it, it's it's weird because I I want them to just be consistent, and I hope that they take this game. And, um, you know, build off of it. Uh, Something I want to mention was uh, I know Sergio had a great goal, but the one play where he got played over the top and he like had to flick it over his head. Oh, my God. And kept going was out like outrageous. dude. I don't know what. This like and and he got injured in my like he got Uh, it looked like he he was when he was walking around, he was limping a little bit. Yeah. Um, hopefully nothing serious, but Sergio just, I, and like, I don't know if I prefer him starting or off the bench still. I, it's, it's so tough for me because the pace that he brings off the bench, I think if the press is working the way it should work, Sergio's better off the bench because those center backs are going to get tired and the outside backs too, from the press that Sergio coming off the bench is going to be a menace running. And it's in not like you don't have Corey defenders. Burke who can run too. Exactly. Man. Exactly. Corey's got decent pace as well. Um, I think Gazdag taking that penalty is huge because we really haven't had a designated penalty kick taker for a long time. Remember and that man shot last year against Portland. Oh God, dude, don't <laughs> remind me. And that man buried that. Like he hit that yeah. with conviction. Like you, he wanted to score. Like you could tell. Um, and I think having, cause even when Jamiro was our guy, like he made one, but then he missed one and then he made a couple and then he missed one. Like, I feel like Gazdag could be that guy that's just going to score a bunch um without obviously he's gonna miss at some point everyone misses at some point um but I I think having a guy who's confident and wants to take those penalties and and we feel confident in taking those penalties uh is is going to be important for this team um and then you know I guess taking Glesnes out wasn't the answer even though I still think Finley should get some minutes um defensively anyway but I I was a good performance and I, I just hope that I I really hope that Jim doesn't play everyone on Sunday. Like, I know it's New England, but I couldn't care less. Like, I want Paxton. I want McGlynn. I want Selva. I want them starting. Like, I want them to start or at least play half. Like, you can start your starters for 45 minutes, get them some running out. You don't want them to get too, you know, lackadaisical and too tight. But I want to see the young guys playing a lot of that game because – we have Champions League on Thursday, which is infinitely more important than that game. The most important match in Union history. Yeah. I, I, I 100% agree with you. We'll, we'll definitely get to that a little later. But um, to, to a little bit of, of Zach's point there, Justin, what I want to ask you is about Daniel Gazdak. Now, it was good. First, first goal penalty kick was great. But I'm just kind of having a tough time like understanding what is Gazdak. He's been here a little over a month now. What are what did we get in Gazdak so far? What have you seen? Uh, we're getting a player that absolutely demands the ball. Someone who has no short of creativity. Right. Uh, someone who listen, listen. Is he does he take as many shots as we? We're expecting no, but I think he's brought a lot to the offense that we haven't seen in the past. We haven't seen a very direct number 10, someone who just, you know, Brendan Brendan was great at, you know, he picked his head up and he would just run, but it, it was always those like, you know, the, those, you know, lung busting runs up the side and it was kind of like you know you knew what you could you would get with him you got a lot of pace and a lot of energy with god's dog you get very deliberate you get very simple you, he he doesn't do anything like he can do some some you know some good trickery as we saw with him uh megging michael bradley <laughs> but, but like it, he keeps it simple but he also adds uh, uh, you know he he brings the the midfield together in a way that I haven't seen f- 
from a, a number 10 in a while for this team. And I, I think, listen, I think the goals are going to come. I mean, obviously this was the start. Right. Um, I, I'm not. I, I I like what he brings, and I like what I like the calming presence he brings. And you can see, listen, yeah, he's only been here a few months, but remember, he he was in. He went to the Euros, then he got, you know, a slight injury, and then he like they've been like trying to wean him in, and he really didn't get his first, you know, I think first start. I believe it was until what was it late June, early July, like so. Like I I think. And also midseason signings, like people forget midseason signings don't aren't all Nico Ladero's. <laughs> don't make like instant, instant impact. Like it takes a little bit of time. Okay. So I, I'm I'm not I don't think anyone's writing him off, but I'm I'm definitely giving him a little bit of leave. But I like I like what I've seen so far. So what you're saying is we got more of a Boric Dochkal than a Marco Fabian. Yeah, I, I think someone that it, I mean, I, I think he. I mean, he still does shoot, but I think I like someone that can, fe- you know, can feed between the lines. I mean, he he provided a, f- a few good through balls, right? And yeah, he, he also isn't afraid. Like we talked about, you know, Zach talked about the moment where where Sergio basically did a rainbow and and you know around the defender. Well, there was one moment Sergio literally danced like. At the top of the box, through like everybody, he's holding on to the ball somehow. That was nice. And the ball pops out, and Gazdag sees it and sprints right onto it, and gets a pretty good shot off. And it would have been a goal for Sergio if he had wasn't just a little ahead of the ball and it slips behind him. But like, he's not afraid to shoot it. He just, I think, he's more deliberate with the shot opportunities. And you know, we talked about Marco Fabian. Marco Fabian just would hit it from anywhere. It wasn't always great. Like. Like I love someone who wants to he shoot. He wanted to also, shoot. That's for but sure. But I also like someone that, like, while they aren't afraid to shoot, also knows it picks the oppor- the, the better opportunities. Not like, right. oh my god, it's the wide open shot, but like, you know, something that makes a little more sense. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you, man. I I agree with you. Should be interesting. Uh, I, I like it, and I definitely do like it. Um, but the thing is, is that when you have someone like this creative, that means. The recipients of these creativity that that he's producing here, they need to they need to capitalize on that as well. So, um, we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on that. But I'm um, not been too mad on, on Gazak's performances. I do feel like he was better. It, we talked about it last night in the stands. I do feel like last night was his best match. DC was good. I feel like last night was his best match just because I saw him do a little bit of everything. Even on the defensive side, I saw him like far in our our in um in in our final and the our our end of the goal. Where he was active as well, um, so I really felt like that was that was a good uh, good game from there. Um, the homegrowns got got out there, guys. Um, Zach, uh, dude, Paxton, <laughs> can we get more minutes with Paxton? I saw this man uh, creating chance that flick into the box. It was beautiful. I need more Paxton, man. Uh, yeah, man. I, I mean, all the homegrowns combined very well too. Like Quinn, Paxton, McGlynn, like they all they had that one uh, combo at the top of the box, like towards the right side of the box on your guy's end, um, and it was like one like pass away from having like four one two touch passes finish it in a goal, and I I think that um, I don't really know why Jim is so reluctant to play Paxton um, because it's interesting for sure it's very weird because. I get that you have Gazdag, um, but I mean, he, he clearly isn't playing every minute. So why not throw Paxton in there? Like, I don't see, he, he looks like he's just as dangerous as Brendan was. Like he's fearless and he just wants to dribble at people. And oh, uh, by the way, Gazdag's Meg yesterday. <laughs> Jesus. Crazy. Jesus. And did you see they super, impo- they, they put, they, they put together the clips of that. And also Marco Fabian, doing the same exact thing a few yeah. years ago. I was like, oh, yeah. my God. Dude, that, that was ridiculous. That was ridiculous. Um, But, yeah, I just – I think uh, Paxton's got what it takes to get more minutes, and I, I don't know why. And, obviously, Quinn and McGlynn have been – Quinn and McGlynn. I'm a poet. Um, But <laughs> they, uh, they're, they're both, they've both been great. Um, Quinn has been sensational every time he's out there. Um. And I, I, like I said, I really hope we see them against um, 
against New England. Because as, as as important as the game is against New England, it pales in comparison to the game on Thursday. And and if Jim wants to play that best 11 on Thursday, he's going to need to limit their minutes heft, heftily. Heftily? I guess that works. Heavily. Heavily. Um, there you go. On, uh, on Sunday. Because I don't want 34-year-old Bedoya. I want 34-year-old Bedoya with 27-year-old leg Bedoya that we saw last night. Uh, yeah, I, I I agree with you. So to kind of just wrap this up, guy, uh, wrap this up, guys. We have our New England preview to get to. Um, this defense looked as advertised. We talked about it in the preview when this defense is clicking and it makes everything better. The fact that the Uni weren't playing from behind for once, it I definitely think that had a big factor in it. Um, and just starting off quick, I, I just in general, I think it really jump starts everything this Union team does. Um, for Sergio Santos. He's been the, one of the better players for this Union team, even throughout this bad stretch. You know, when this team needs a goal, it seems like he has been stepping up, and you know, he he answered the, the uh he answered the call yesterday as well. I, I do like Zach's point. You know, I, the thought of bringing him off the bench, thirty minutes of just absolute hell for those back for the for the back lines of the opposing teams. I think it's a good point. Overall, a good win and something that we kind of needed because, as we can clearly tell. We are in Ameri Club America's head at the moment. I can't believe an MLS club is in the head of a Liga Mekis club, but that it is what it is. Oscar, for, uh, for you, my man, we're not obviously going to preview Club America. We're, we're literally, we have a week away. That's a little too early. But if you come back next Tuesday, we'll have something for you, my man. We'll have we'll actually have people who know Club America very well as well. We don't, what you think? We, we're not, you think we're not looking at Club America? Come on, Oscar. Come on now. All right, guys, let's move on over now. Of course, this upcoming Sunday, usually I would be getting up. I'd be getting really hyped. I'd be getting round, round, wound up and whatnot because it's New England Revolution time. But obviously, with what's at stake next week, this upcoming match Sunday really has doesn't have a lot of implications. But of course, guys, that does not matter because I am so proud that we finally have someone to preview a New England Revolution uh, matchup here. It's Bruce everyone. Arena, isn't it? Bruce Arena. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit, guys. One one day I will get you Bruce Arena. So you can tell him exactly how you feel about him, Justin. Listen, but this... you neck mf -er. <laughs> Oh, man. You're already making us enemies. No, but um, guys, listen. Uh, you guys know New England really doesn't care too much about myself and about our podcast, honestly. But uh, we're blessed enough that we have an actual great guy on here to kind of help us re review this matchup this upcoming Sunday. So without further ado, please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Greg from the Revolution Recap. What's up, Greg? How you doing, man? Hey, it's nice to be uh, here with you guys. I appreciate you having us on. And uh, I guess I come in peace because uh, I don't know if you guys <laughs> know this, but I actually am the third of Revolution Recap. I'm actually a displaced New Englander and I live in Delaware County, so I, I follow nice. the team from abroad. So I come in peace. I'm probably going to be the nicest Revolution fan you guys are going to have, or the most pro <laughs> Philly fan you guys will find because I have to live amongst you people. So, <laughs> Dude, that is crazy. You're, you're, are you a Delco kid? Yeah, well, not a Delco kid. I've lived in, in the Philadelphia area for a few years now. My Very wife nice. dragged me down here for college purposes. <laughs> so it was kind of a hesitant thing. But, uh, yeah, I, I am among you guys. Okay. Okay. So are you originally from like the Massachusetts area or somewhere? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm a New England, New England, uh, you know, born okay. and raised. Cool. Uh, but I've been here for the past few years. Unfortunately, in 2017, I see that Eagles background. Uh, so I won't hold that against you. Uh, bit, bit of a rough patch uh, living during that time. But I hear you. Uh, we hear got you. our we got our kind of revenge last year in the playoffs a little bit. So yeah, I, I, I call a little even. Yeah, you, yeah, you definitely, you guys definitely did. That was one of the worst nights of my life. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> no, but um, it's a good point. Hold on to that point because I definitely have something to ask about you. But first off, be Greg, before we get into anything, listen, we obviously here in Philadelphia, we don't know a, a lot about Revolution Recap. We're, we're we're extremely honored to have you on here. But who the hell is Revolution Recap? Tell us a little bit about what you guys are all about there. Yeah, so Revolution Recap started actually in the mid-2000s. Uh, my podcast partner, Sean Donahue. Yeah, yeah, mid-2000s, MLS 1.0. Oh, uh, my God. Right. The stories. The cool. stories. Sean, Sean did, my friend Sean Donahue did a radio show in Rhode Island uh, and kind of gave coverage of the team at that time. It was pretty small. It's a local radio station. <laughs> uh, right. Eventually, Sean created a website called New England Soccer Today, which I joined. Uh, I met him in college. Uh, and so we kind of did, you know, beat writer stuff uh, throughout the mid 2010s. Uh, and then kind of life got in the way. We couldn't keep up with the beat reporter type stuff. 
Uh, so we transitioned to kind of a once a week podcast, which is Revolution Recap. So we kind of brought back that name. And so it's kind of, we, we brought it back to life. Uh, and we're in year four of kind of the rebooted version. We brought on uh, Chris Falukas, who's been a great third host, who I, I think uh, you guys know. Uh, and so uh, we, we've been doing that for a few years. We still do our player interviews. We still have some, uh, you know, pretty interesting chats we have on some current former players from time to time. But um, and, and we do have the honor of speaking to Bruce Arena and asking him questions and having him <laughs> really stonewall us and not give us any so, sort of clarity whatsoever. And it's very frustrating. <laughs> so we, it's, yeah, so that, that's kind of our story of how we, we got to be where we are right now. Well, it's good to hear that you would struggle with it as well. So, there you go, <laughs> Justin. So not a lot there to, to go off, but that, that is also, and, and I'm, I'm honored. We have actual history. I, I, I honestly did not know that about you guys. We have some MLS 1.0 history, man. There's a lot of intriguing things about MLS 1.0. So I will say one of my favorite Revs player was Charlie Joseph. Have you guys ever been able to interview him? Yes, we did. We interviewed Charlie Joseph last year. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. And if you go to our feed on iTunes, if you go to uh, all episodes, um, we've, we've rigged it. So the interviews are up at the top. So Shalry Joseph is on there and Sean actually knew Shalry Joseph from, um, back in his time with MLS 1.0. Sean obviously knows some of these guys. Uh, and so actually after Shalry Joseph left, uh, the Granada head coaching job, I don't know if you guys know that he was coaching Granada, uh, prior to this year's gold cup. Uh, we had him on, we talked about that. And at the time he didn't have, uh, he, he was kind of wondering what to do next. And since then he's been hired as an Academy coach with the revolution. So That's we did cool. have one. We've had on Jay Heaps. Uh, we had on Brian Dunseth. Uh, we had a few uh, interesting Revolution players to kind of come on and give their story. So it's always fun interviewing former players and give them their, um, you know, tidbits because they're they're more willing to kind of talk with kind of, you know, their career and perspective and all that. So it's really fun to, to get someone. Uh, Jeff Lorenowitz. We have Philly guy, Jeff Lorenowitz. There you uh, go. On our podcast. You, go. you know, so we, we've had some really good guests who have told us some really interesting Did stories over the years. That's awesome. Did you ever expect Taylor Twelman would become this like this like I guess soccer figure now? I mean, this man is making rants on Sports Center. Did you ever think he would get to this popularity? No, I mean, I didn't. I, that's probably a better question for Sean because he was a more much more diehard fan than I was. Okay. I kind of caught on right after the glory years. Um, ah. I, I don't think so though. And and another interesting story that I don't know if you guys know this, but I was told that for a while Taylor Twelman was being vetted to be the Bachelor on abc did you guys know this? <laughs> no <laughs> no but i could see it i can see it no but God, that would have been a long time ago this that's, is a long time ago that's and really he, funny i said no because he wasn't interested in being in the spotlight or, or something uh, well, it's too late yeah, now. Look, look at him now but no i mean his obviously his career unfortunately ended um i know sooner than it should have and um but it's great to see him find something post-career playing career um, that he's happy with. So I know he's not everyone's favorite commentator, but it, it's exciting to see him at least be a, a you know growing voice for soccer. He's he was actually here, Alexi right? Lawless. He's better than Alexi Lawless. So that's something. <laughs> yeah, but that, that would have been that would have been great a tidbit to know when we uh, we had him on the the Union Happy Hour in like yeah, November. That would have been a great tidbit to ask him. You guys got to get him back on. That's uh, apparently so he's funny. A, apparently he's a big fan of the show too. So I'm sure you can just get him on with that. You can just talk with Bachelor with him in general. I'm sure. <laughs> that's so funny. The, the one he missed out on. That, that's, pretty, that's pretty funny. Um, so another question I really want to ask you. Look, so one of the things that we kind of struggle with, and specifically me, like I don't just do uni coverage. I do all five Philly sports coverage here. Um, is, is kind of like integrating the union with the sports landscape that's here. You live here. You know how crazy you know these sports fans are. I mean, you see behind me. Mm -hmm. And we kind of been struggling with that. Now, in your case, listen, Boston, especially over the last two decades, it's like championship city. Mm -hmm. And New England, I, I from, from what I see from afar, kind of gets forgotten. What is kind of like the status of, or what is the landscape like with the Revs kind of trying to fit in with the other Boston sports? Yeah, it's interesting because I think there was a radio host. It might have been from your Twitter feeds, but I remember a radio host was kind of going off on Union fans that they aren't talking about. Tyro about Johnson. Yeah, oh, yeah. God, that that was a that was a whole thing, and it. Yeah, well, don't get well, started on just, that one. Well, in a weird way, though, I, I saw that and I was like, "Boy, we kind of have the same struggle." And I was also kind of like, you know, I don't even think anyone from New England would acknowledge this on the radio. Like, if Revs fans are flooding the mentions of radio hosts, you know, at least you guys were acknowledged. So good for you guys. But you know, <laughs> we're we're still scrapping for some, uh, you know, legacy media attention, so to speak. There, there's the, you know, every now and then Bruce Arena goes on and gives a ten minute interview and. 
you know, not it doesn't really move the needle a little bit, but yeah, it's it's a little bit hard. They're still kind of struggling to, I don't know, get their foot in the door because Boston is so kind of sports crazy and just the other sports just dominate year round. Boston's a huge baseball city too, so oh, yeah. Going up against baseball and the Red Sox, I mean, I, I, I truthfully believe that there is a market of both baseball and soccer. You don't have to root for one or the other. But, uh, you know, when the Red Sox are doing great, everyone talks about the Red Sox. When the Red Sox are doing terrible, everyone's talking about the Red Sox. Um, it's the same with the Patriots. And so it's it's kind of just an unfortunate. We're still trying to get our, our foot kind of – we're still right. trying to be noticed. Um, and it's really frustrating <laughs> to be in first place and still not get that credit. Um, Us oh, last year. Right. <laughs> I mean, listen, I mean, you know, your owner probably forgot he owned a soccer team, That's to be honest, issue, yeah. to a few years ago. So he's like, oh, yeah, wait, I, I own two teams. That's right. Yeah. It's interesting when you read about Robert Kraft and how MLS might not, you know, MLS at the start, you know, he was so important to it. And, you know, it kind of seemed like he just had this long period where, you know, his own team didn't get out of MLS 1.0. So I'm encouraged to see the moves that they've made since then. Bruce Arena jokes aside, you know, hiring Bruce Arena, um, getting a Revs 2 side, uh, a USL side, which we didn't have until two years ago. You guys were way ahead of the curb uh, on, on us from that. Uh, and, uh, you know, building out the front office. I mean, we we really were, you know, really, you know, very bare boned operation before Bruce Arena came in in 2019. So we're excited that, you know, Robert Kraft has kind of caught up a little bit. And so I can't really say that he's completely ignoring the team. Uh, but in terms of media coverage, maybe he he could be doing a little bit more uh, on that front to help us get some uh, attention. I, I agree with you there. And it's crazy because, yeah, you, you're right about the Red Sox. And, and I know like cities like Boston, obviously the Yankees as well. Like it's, it's crazy baseball yeah. cities. But the thing is, is like in the winter and, and same thing here in Philadelphia, like the people do have the intention span to follow the Sixers, follow the Flyers in your in your case, follow the Celtics, follow the Bruins. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it's it's very feasible that people can follow the baseball and the MLS. Like it, it, I don't I don't think that that's out of the order. And I think that's a great a great reason why I love the MLS schedule because when you look at it from the American sports landscape, it, it's it's in the right spot. Like it's in the summer, yeah. you know. And, and soccer to me, like you know, it's cool watching you know the the snow game when like you know USA Costa Rica in, in Colorado. Like that's cool. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, I I think soccer should be played in warm weather. But um, I, I definitely, I definitely agree with you there. What do you, what do you, what do you think? What else do you think New England needs to do? The Ravs need to do to kind of, you know, fit themselves in there. Well, if you had asked me a few months ago, I, I would have said that we'd get more attention if guys like Matt Turner go to the Gold Cup and win a championship for the United States, and he's done nice. that. He's done that, and nothing has really changed. It barely got mentioned. So, I, I don't know. There's a lot of really interesting players that I think. New England fans would love to hear about or love to follow. I think there's a lot of guys like Tejon Buchanan and Matt Turner that are, are you know, kind of come from nothing, not, not nothing, but, uh, you know, they're really young players that are easy to root for. Uh, we have Carlos Hill, who's a great playmaker. We have Gustavo Bo, who can score from anywhere. Uh, we have a lot of really exciting soccer players that you would think a casual sports fan could really get into. And for whatever reason, it just hasn't really translated. So I'm not sure if it's just a matter of, it's a hopeless task and we're just in a, you know, sports market where the big four are always going to dominate. I don't know if it's a marketing thing. Um, I don't know if they need to win a trophy and maybe that'll get some attention. Um, maybe it's a little bit of all of the above, but it, it's a really tough nut to crack. And, you know, for years we kind of said, once we put a winning product, things will probably change and we have a winning product now. And I, I don't know. But maybe you guys can tell me because you guys are a year ahead of us on this. I mean, it, <laughs> honestly, you're talking, it sounds just like our situation. So I, I guess we don't have really much else to, the, help you. Some that people are holding out for a, a big name signing or a soccer specific stadium. <laughs> I don't know if either of those things will ever happen, but even if they do, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I thought building putting a winning team on the field would change things and it really hasn't. So uh, maybe it's just a hopeless task and it's not well, even really worth worrying. I mean, people are traveling for the Patriots. Yeah. You, know, you could travel for the Revs too, right? You, yeah, you, you could, there's really not a whole lot of excuse there. I, I think it might just be a matter of, we have to let time kind of build and have people that kind of grow up with the team and kind of connect that way. And maybe that's what it comes down to. And it's just a matter of time, but it's, uh, I don't know. It, it's an uphill battle for sure. Right now at the end of the day, we're all trying to fight the same battles. And that's why I say this most community, we got to stay tight. We definitely mm -hmm. got to stay tight, man. Um, you mentioned it. We, we kind of talked about before the podcast, um, the Buchanan rumors club Bruges. You got anything on, on that for us? Yeah. So apparently it came out today that he's been 
I don't think it's been finalized. Uh, there's another team in Germany that is apparently still in talks with uh, Taysom Buchanan, uh, but apparently he is going to be sold for $7 million. It's going to be a Brendan Aronson type deal where he is sold and then loaned back to the New England Revolution. Uh, so he will finish the season with the Revolution and then – Allegedly, he, he's going to Club Bruges, but apparently it's between them and I think FC Augsburg uh, over Augsburg. in Germany. Okay. Apparently, those two, teams are, those two teams are apparently fighting for his signature. That, that was the most recent report. Um, wow. Now, the other, the other weird thing I've heard is that apparently a lot of these stories are coming out from the Tejan Buchanan camp. And so my, my kind of theory is that Brugge has – it's probably leaning Brug and Buchanan and him are negotiating back and forth. So randomly a report came out like, Oh no, 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 there's a, another second team involved. And so I'm, I'm wondering if that might be the player trying to, uh, you know, play some games during negotiations. But yeah, I mean the, the transfer window is closing today. I, I fully expect something to get done today. Okay. Okay. So we, we were also were discussing what would his position do you believe would be over in Europe? Would he like, cause he's obviously like a, like a he's kind of feels like a natural winger. Yeah, he's a winger uh, for the Revolution, but from what I understand in Europe, they kind of view him to be a wing back, kind of in the Alfonso Davies mold. Yeah, man. <laughs> Literally said that I was like, he's he might not be as quick, but he absolutely has the uh, the mobility, the uh, the one on one, you know, ability that you that you want from a a, a modern wing back. And I was yeah. like, well, if he's not a winger, I'm like, wing back is essentially the modern winger, like there's not necessarily a true winger out and out these days. Yeah. And he played with, he played right back for us last year in the playoffs. We had some injuries last year. So uh, again, don't mean to bring up bad memories, but you guys have seen him as a right back. Uh, you know, he, he, he can play there. He's a little competent back there. I think his defensive skills will have to grow a little bit. I think right now his best position is winger, but obviously when he gets over to Europe, I think as an attacking modern wing back, uh, I certainly think he fits that mold pretty well. Zach, are you surprised Buchanan's worth more than Brendan? Uh, I mean, nah, because it's whatever someone's willing to pay for him at the end of the day. Like, uh, you can value your asset at whatever you want, but if someone like I, you could say that Brendan's worth fifteen million, but if a team's not going to pay, he's not worth fifteen million. Um, so, I, and I think that's that's the main thing. Now, I, I, teams could be looking for wingbacks at this time. Because at, at this time, three or five at the back is the way to play. Uh, and you need wingbacks who can cover that great attacking and defensive at the same time. So I, I, I'm not surprised at all um, in this current climate, especially because Brendan played a position that isn't really used very often in European football anymore. Like the 10 is kind of a dying position everywhere but the MLS, where you have instead like eights who can play as 10s and six, sixes who can play as 10s. Um, and Brendan like is more now morphing into like a winger than he was ever at, um, at the union. Because like, if you see for the national team, when he comes on, he comes on for Christian most of the time and goes on that left side or sometimes Mm. plays on the right side. Um, so I think just at the time, Brendan's position wasn't one that teams were like, we need this position indefinitely. They were like, no, we're going to buy this kid and we're going to kind of maneuver him and and shape him into more of a winger or something that we can use whereas buchanan kind of just fits into what teams are looking for right now okay well Ike game is chiming in as well i guess freiburg also are interested in uh buchanan possibility as well but that's awesome for you guys and that's kind of the direction the mls you know we, we have these kids that are developing but you know, if we could sell these kids over to the to the pinnacle of, of soccer worldwide in Europe, that that's definitely huge, definitely, definitely huge. Um, Greg, what I wanted to ask you, obviously, you guys are in first place. You guys are tearing it up. It's a good season for you guys. What's kind of been the difference this season from from last? Well, a, a big obvious difference is Carlos Hill is back for us this year. Uh, you know, we played you guys every other week, it seemed like. So you guys probably noticed that for most of the season, we missed Carles Heel, uh, who is our pl- playmaker. He's our point guard. Uh, if the Revs win the game, he probably has the most touches than anyone else on the field. Um, right now, I think he has five key passes a game. Uh, next to that, I think, is Gustavo Bo, who's averaging about 1.8. So Carlos Heel is just our playmaker, and without him last year, we really struggled to create chances and to score goals. Um, and, you know, I, I think Carlos Heel was building an MVP case. Uh, he was going for the single-season assist record, which is Carlos Valderrama uh, in 2000 with 26. Uh, I think he was at 15 or something like that. 
uh, as of a few games ago. Um, but he, he's just been the all-around difference maker that has been the X factor for the Revolution. And that's why we saw the Revolution kind of make that push towards the end of the season. He came back. He was healthy. Um, all three designated players were in the lineup. Uh, and and they're just firing from all cylinders. And so we kind of carried over some of that momentum from the playoffs last year into this year. Um, unfortunately for us, luckily for you guys, Carlos Hill is dealing with a bit of an injury and reportedly is going to be out. Uh, Sunday. And so you might not see a full New England squad. You might not see the first place New England Revolution. You might see a, uh, you know, injured, uh, not as effective New England Revolution. But the reason we're in first place right now and so far above everyone else on the table in the Eastern Conference is because of Carlos Hill. I will say you guys did take advantage of us in Columbus kind of having a little dip in form in the beginning of the season as well. So uh, I, I I think you guys are going to get that number one seed come playoff time, but we'll see what you can do with it because obviously, you know, not every – Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, that's the beauty of knockout rounds and single elimination. Uh, and, yeah, you, you guys certainly were – I mean, how many guys times did you guys beat us last year? I think we met six times and we didn't get that win until the playoffs. So, you know, any given Sunday or any given Saturday, I guess. Yeah, so. But, I knew it was going to happen last year, too. I knew it was going to happen. It was only a matter of time of you before you guys figured out. No, because, like, think about it. Like, when you – in the NFL, right, like, you play a team twice every – you play each team in your division twice a year, right? If you play that team in the playoffs and you beat them twice already, it's not looking good for you, if I'm being honest. Like, because they, they know. Like, they figured it out at that point how to beat you because you're going to play the same way because that's how you've beat them both times. But if they make adjustments and pl- playing six or seven times is a lot different than playing twice and the union have their system, new England ended up figuring out that system. And in the playoffs, they executed the way that they played to combat how we played to perfection, like to perfection. The union looked like a different team than they did the entire rest of the season. There was also a lot of close games last year, too. I think the season finale, I think, was 2 nothing, But I think yeah. every other game was either a tie or a one-goal game. Uh, and so I think if you watched all those games, you know, it, I think to the Revolution's credit, I don't think we were on a totally different, you know, spectrum from the Union. I know the Union were the one seed, and I think we were the eight seed last year. But, you know, we, we played you guys pretty well in some games during the regular season. So it wasn't a completely one – the, the results were one-sided, but uh, I don't think the performances were one-sided necessarily. So, yeah, I, I guess it was just kind of we were due to finally get one to go in our our way on the scoreline. I mean, uh, what it clearly was was Anthony Fontana didn't have a, a, a banger in play hockey, and that was like the difference. Like at least two of the games, he has a great goal, and it's like, oh, well, come on. Like what are the odds of that happening again and again and again? Very true, very true. Um, PJ, we kind of we kind of did talk about this, but – how, how have this, uh, the attendance been this season with full capacity? Yeah, so the attendance numbers are very bad. I think someone actually tweeted them at me today, and I think our average attendance is like 10,000 or 11,000. Um, but I know that is probably because of capacity restrictions in Massachusetts. Oh, okay. Um, I did not know this. I, I do know that the last kind of pre-COVID year in 2019, we were around 16,000 fans. Um, we've kind of floated between 16,000 and 20,000 fans you know, in the past decade or so, we haven't really seen a lot of growth. It kind of comes in waves. Um, but what, what does New England need to do to get more fans? The I think winning would be good. I think winning an MLS Cup would be good, um, or at least a supporter shield, uh, something. Uh, our, our last trophy was, I think, the Superliga, uh, which we won on the state in uh, 2008. So it's been 13 years since we've kind of nice. won significantly. Um, so I, I think if they kind of get some momentum and put a winning product on the field, I, I think that will help. Um, but will that be a long-term thing? Probably not. I, when we start to dip down again, uh, I'm sure we're going to recede back to the 15 or 16,000 fan level. Okay. Okay. We could also get a soccer stadium. I would love to have a soccer stadium, but I think that's more of a dream than an actual, uh, plan. We, yeah. I mean, we, there's, there's a lot of union fans that still want to be down in South Philly. So yeah. I get that PJ. I appreciate the kind words there, my man. It's not, it's this haircut's been over a week. And uh, PJ, it's actually not a jersey. I actually said the same thing. It does look like a sick kit you got going on. Yeah, now. it's a it's a neon green uh, training top. Well, trainer's top, I guess, for the club I train for. So uh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And, and speaking of neon green, um, Justin, shouts to the guy in our section that rocked the Seattle Sounders T-shirt. Oh my god, I... guy's ballsy. <laughs> yeah, I I think I said it earlier in the like he showed up and like 
walked away and I was like, I'm like, I, did I just see a guy in a Sounders shirt? And then like 15 minutes later, someone's like, hey, yo, why the F are you wearing? And I looked and I'm like, oh, he actually in our section. Oh, boy. It was, you know what? It's weird, but it's like we finally made it. Like you only see that at like NBA or NFL games, right? Like, you know, someone's got the random guys got like a Pat Mahomes jersey at an Eagles game. Hey, the guy's got a Seattle Sounders t-shirt in the tree. It's like we made it. Finally, finally, finally. Um, all right. So listen, Greg, as much as I want to tell you that Sunday is going to be a bunch of fireworks, be typical Philly, New England. <laughs> I hope it's not simply because we kind of already talked about it. You know, this upcoming week is really kind of big for us. It's probably the biggest week of our franchise's history. Um, So uh, I think the majority of us here on this podcast and and the fan base, we don't even want to see our starters out there. We want to see a bunch of kids uh, put out. Stuart Finley, uh, you know, put Matt Freezy in there. You know, I I think that's kind of, where we're all at but like what is the mentality with when you are you guys like you know we're just we we don't care we're gonna get these three points or like are you guys like kind of rusting some guys as well oh no we we bruce arena will take three points every chance he can get three points he always plays his best available lineup now i alluded to carlos heel potentially being out as i say he's dealing with a sports hernia so we don't expect him to play that's been reported Bruce Arena didn't confirm it, but he's been very shady about his status. So if you guys don't see Carlos Hill in the lineup, it's going to be a closer matchup uh, than you think if you have your B team. Uh, We just played Nashville last night. Nashville played how they typically play, and they just kind of sat back and tried getting a point. But they played some B teamers too, and we couldn't break them down. Um, It's a little disappointing because, you know, with Nashville and Philadelphia on the schedule, uh, the first place revs, I, I think a lot of people would have liked to have seen, you know, where these teams kind of stand. Right. Uh, and it's going to kind of be with an asterisk because I think you guys in Nashville both kind of play B teams and we don't have Carlos Hill. So we'll have to figure this all out in the playoffs. Um, but no, the, the revolution are going to want three points, no doubt, uh, especially coming off a frustrating draw with Nashville. So um, it'll be interesting to see how they line up. Uh, we've been playing in a diamond formation uh, recently. Um, With Buchanan at the Gold Cup, we kind of shifted to kind of more of a diamond. Um, Tejon came back. He kind of took over the Carlos Hill role, which is technically like the central attacking midfielder, but he also kind of roams from side to side. So um, it'll be interesting to see if we shuffle things around. But either way, you can expect us to go for three points. And, you know, we'll we'll be smelling blood if you guys feel the uh, B-team lineup. (laughs) I don't doubt that, especially with Bruce Arena um, at the helm there. Um, guys, so what do, what do what should we expect from this lineup? Honestly, Justin, I'll let you start. You haven't gone in a while. Um, honestly, I feel like it's going to be anyone that's n- potentially nursing an injury. Uh, you're not going to want to play them on turf. I, I mean, let's be honest. There's a, there's a reason why you know every every superstar that's come into this league, whenever it comes to New England, they suddenly have an injury. Like, oh no, you know, I, I, you know. Can count it with like Zlatan, you know. It's like, oh well, you know, it, it's you know, he has a knee injury. Oh, he can probably go travel to New England, you know. It's gonna be, uh. So I definitely see a bit of rotation. Um. Yeah. With 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 uh with Club America on the horizon, I, I think you you gotta rotate. I mean, I know, I say that knowing Jim doesn't rotate, <laughs> so I I say they're gonna rotate, and I for I. Part of me believes it, but part of me also does not believe it because I said they were going to rotate against Chicago. I said they were going to rotate against TFC. They didn't either. So, I mean, I would I would hope because I, I don't know about Sergio. Um, I, I haven't heard. I know we saw him kind of limp off around the 70th minute. So, We'll see yeah. how I don't. I if, if Sergio, if Sergio, I think you're resting. I don't think I you're, think what's the dressing room too now. Yeah, you're, you're not you're not risking him when you would need absolutely need him uh, for your match at the Azteca. Oh yeah, I, I I would hope the kids start to show up. I mean, you know, you know, Paxton, Jack, and and and, and Quinn absolutely bust around TFC, and it, that just goes to show. Like it, it makes you think. Well, why isn't Jim been playing the kids? A little more like when you can rotate and you have three kids that clearly can play. Like, as I said, Quinn has not had a bad, you know, I don't think he's had a bad moment on the field. Like, 
every time I've seen him play, he's gone and done something. You just go like, Jesus, like this kid could actually be be something pretty special. I think he might be one of the next homegrowns to get sold for not a you know Brendan money, but he could get sold for a decent amount. And I hope that they rotate because yeah, it's just like you you don't want to you Champions. don't want to yeah you don't want to risk it with a much more important game on the horizon. But again, it's Jim. He doesn't rotate, so we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll see how that works. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how that works. Zach, do you think there'll be some rotation? Uh, I think Quinn, Jack, Dude, Finley. Just start Paxton. Just start Paxton. Qu- I don't think Paxton's going to start. I think Gazdag's still going to start, but I think he's only uh, going to play 45, and then Paxton's going to come in at halftime. But I think Quinn, Jack, Finley, Freeze, and one of Harriel and Powell will start it right back. I think that's going to yes. be. I think. I think that half of the lineup will will be will be out. Um, I think you have to play Corey and Casper uh, because you don't have any other strikers, <laughs> um, unless you play one up top, and then you probably play Corey. Uh, but I, I think I think Jim is gonna you know do the right thing, the smart thing, and rest half the lineup, and then sub the other half of the lineup out. Please, yes, please, yes, please. All right, let's let's uh, do some uh, some predictions, and we'll get we'll get out of here. Uh, Greg, of course, you are our guest. What do you see happening this upcoming Sunday in Gillette Stadium? Well, I'm going to be a homer, and I'm going to take the Revolution one nothing. But I think this is going to be a very boring, dry game. Um, yeah, especially right. too, if you guys are expecting some rotation in the lineup, and, and hearing that comment about playing one striker or two. You know, maybe Philadelphia kind of sits back and kind of pulls a, a page out of Nashville's playbook and makes the revolution break them down. Um, I think with Gustavo Bo and Adam Buxa, both those guys have been on fire this season. I think we'll break through eventually. I don't think we can go through two full games without scoring at home. So I, I think we do get a breakthrough in the second half, but I don't think this is going to be much of a thrilling game. I think this is going to be a very defensive battle and the fewer mistakes win. So I'm going to go one nothing revolution. That is, that is a very good point. Zach, what do you see happening on Sunday? Uh, if uh, Carlos Hill plays 3-1, if he doesn't, 2-1 revs. Mm. That's what I got. Okay. Justin? Um, I'm thinking something similar, but if Carlos Hill plays, it's 2-1 revs. If, if he doesn't play, I'm thinking a 1-1 draw. Okay. Okay. I, I'm just kind of neutral. I'm like, I don't, uh, you know, lose, draw, or or win. You know, you know where my 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 head's at when it comes to uh, this week for the Philadelphia Union. Um, awesome stuff here, Greg. Where can people find you? And of course, Revolution recap in case, in case they get the the hankering for for checking out some revs pods out there. Yeah, I, I was gonna say Revolution Twitter is not as fun as Union Twitter. You guys got a lot of really fun personalities over there. <laughs> uh, Hulk and you know it's you know, crazy. Like, uh, we're always tweeting. Uh, we're always having a lot of fun. And if you want to join Revolution Twitter, follow us at Revolution Recap. Uh, we also have a Revolution Recap Instagram page that I started up. So we're trying to boost the follower count there. Uh, please feel free to give us a follow there. And by the way, I don't know if anyone out there is a jersey collector, but we also just recently got a sponsor, uh, Galasso Kits. Uh, they sell kits and all sorts of hey. uh, merchandise. <sighs> they have a couple of union uh, items for sale. Uh, not a whole lot. They got a scarf and a shirt, but. Uh, promo code revs recap for 15% off uh, and they're at Galasso kits on Twitter. So check them out. Very nice. Very, very nice. Oh man, Greg, don't, don't tell me that, that yeah. it, Johnny, Johnny and Zach. No, my closet is, this man's got an extra closet just for kits. Literally most of my jerseys in my, in my, in my, in my closet are soccer kits. <laughs> well, we, we have one person on our, our podcast, uh, Chris, and we got this sponsorship and we kind of put this like embargo. We were like, Hey man, like we need you to not buy anything for like at least three weeks. Like you can't just clear out all the revolution items. You got to give our <laughs> listeners a chance to, to kind of take some stuff off. Well, this so website, so. <laughs> awesome stuff. Awesome. Greg, seriously, thank you so much. We were truly honored to have you on here, man. Some history given, given to us as well. So thank you so much for that. 
Um, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for another episode of Duke by the River. Please don't forget, if you are watching this on PSN or on Ed Barcelo Philly's YouTube channel, hit that like button and subscribe. Of course, you can find Duke by the River wherever you stream podcasts from Apple, Google, and Spotify. And, of course, you can find us on PSN Radio where you can find all of your other Philly Sports Network podcasts as well. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Greg from Revolution Recap. That is Zach Lobasso, and that is Justin Balds against Michael Bradley Freiberg. And, of course, I go by the name of Ed Barcelo Philly, and we're telling you guys to dupe on. We'll talk to you guys very soon.